So what's up, guys? Welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. My name is Jared Haskell. I'm Jason McCutcheon. And today we're talking about, again about prices and packaging. Um, again, guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribing on YouTube, that you're clicking the bell so you're notified every time that we're posting. Uh, at this point, we're really doing it. We've done a really good job of posting every single week, Jay. We've not only multiple times per week. I know, I know. Between the YouTube channel and the podcast, um, I'm pretty proud of us. Uh, if no one else is going to pat ourselves on the back, I mean, it's hard for us to stick with anything, really. <laughs> well, you know, especially when it's one of those things where you're like, wow, this is really hard. Oh, the other thing, make sure that you are leaving us a review. If you're listening to this to uh, uh, listening to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, leave a five star review. It really, really helps us a lot, especially as we're we're trying to get um, our footing underneath us. Yeah, uh, as far as we, goes. some some of the people who've given us comments and feedback, it's super appreciated and really helpful. And helps us kind of think about how can we do better. How do we get you stuff you want? Make that money. Make that cheddar, honey. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today, um, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit, uh, I think when we first started the podcast, uh, about pricing and packages. And um, I think today what we want to do is we want to dive a little bit more into philosophy and approach, um, not only, you know, what you're worth, that kind of discussion, but um, talking about how you can, in general, just sell more weddings with the structure of your Yeah, how do you make right? packages that sell? And, yes. and so I, let me ask you this. A lot of people, I don't think people think of your packages as part of your sales, but yeah. we do. Why, why do you think people kind of downplay? So for, if you don't understand what I mean by packages, I mean, it's really a structure of the services that you provide and the, and, and the content or the products you deliver how you're, they're sold and what groupings, you know, and really how they're branded and how they're named. And those are your packages. So why do you think kind of, I, I hear a lot about all different techniques and things, and I don't always hear people talking about using packages as something to help you sell more weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think that is? Um, I don't really know why people don't see it that way see it as a part of the sales process because it, it's, I, I don't know, just for me, when we have been putting our packages together and we've shifted them over the years, my main thought is I want people to know exactly what things look like even before I have a conversation with them um, because it just makes it a, a simple process for them. Like we, we want it to be a simple purchase decision for them. Like just strip away as much complication as possible, make it as straightforward, make it just, you know, three bullet points. Um, because if you simplify, if you can get in somebody's head and, and if you're a more simple kind of structure over somebody else's more complicated structure of, of pricing, and if they send them a PDF that has like nine, 10 bullet points about what's included, um, then you're probably already have a leg up on somebody. Um, so I would say simplicity, it, it should be kind of the baseline. I, I don't know why people don't see it as a part of that sales process. You know what I, I think a lot of people, they mean really well. Hmm. And so they think, um, if I, if I have more, it looks like I'm giving them more. Yes. And so the more words is more, more better. More <laughs> items. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, look at all these bullet points you get. And I'll, I remember looking at a guy's package a couple of weeks ago and it said something like shot in beautiful 4k. Yep. That was one of his bullets. And I, I remember thinking like, does someone care about that? Like, does that help them understand what they're getting more? Like, or is it just more words and, and it's keeping me from reading what I'm really going to be getting? And like, mm -hmm. I think people just, they fall into that trap of just being insecure yep. in what they're offering people. And, and I think they mean well, and, but they just end up like creating this wall of words mm -hmm. where they just aren't really being super. I, I think what I've seen with our pricing and a lot of what you do, um, is like the goal is simplicity and the goal is um, we talk a lot about time to close here, which is like the first moment someone interacts with you, how quickly and easily can you get them to make a decision to make a purchase and even yes. all that. And like we kind of have built it around. And what I've seen is like the simpler we make things, the easier it is for someone to get connected with us and the easier it is to feel comfortable to reach out to you. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and I think especially, you know, we we get a broad range of the types of people that are hiring us at Stop Go Love, where some people are like hire us a year and a half, two years ahead of time. Some people are hiring us two months beforehand. So just making it as simple as possible. Usually the the two months ahead of time, that that person is like, I just need to hire someone really quick. Like my grandmother is, is, you know, in the hospital and I just need to make this decision as fast as possible. And if you were able to just make it super easy for a person by just having a simple structure um, and not really, you know, and, and I think it's just, you got to think about what other videographers out there are offering too, like what their sales pitch is. Um, you want to be able to make yourself comparable to other people in your market pretty easily. So if you're like, hey, I offer DVDs and that person doesn't, like that it's not mumbo jumbo when you're talking about that specific service, that it's we provide these three DVDs. Like I, I think just thinking about it as a, as a bullet <laughs> points, just getting your point across quickly and simply is, yeah. Yeah. Key. So what, is, what are the t- biggest tips you would give someone? And let's just talk website. Sure. When you're presenting information on your website about your packages, um, how do we, as wedding creatives, create more? Because let, let, our goal from our website is to create phone calls and leads. Mm-hmm form fills, whatever some kind of conversion is. Yep. My goal is not even for you to read it. I don't even need you to fully un- understand every little thing. Mm-hmm. I want you to get a hold of me. So how do we get more conversions through our packages? Uh, yeah, so you, we, we talked about this, um, you know, and it has to do with what exactly is on your website is, you know, what, what are the name of the packages, right? You know, some people, and for a while we even had like, the basic package and, you know, the gold package or the platinum package. A lot of times, you know, you mentioned it a lot is, you know, these names really don't mean anything to the couple. It's just like good, better, best kind of thing. Um, I think we found a lot of success in, in naming our products actually what they are actually named. The deliverable. Yeah, the deliverable itself. So we have like the raw footage package. We have the recap package. And then we have the love story package, which is probably like our most, um, I don't know, the creative I guess, name where someone wouldn't know exactly what that is unless they actually, you know, talk to us or, or read uh, the They can points. know pretty quick just reading the site. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but, but making it simple for someone to be like, okay, this is exa- exactly what I know I'm going to be purchasing um, just by the name of the package. Well, and if you're out there in, in TV land and you're watching this, my biggest advice to you would be when you are setting up your prices and when you're setting up your packages, don't demean one package with the name of the next package. Like it, I don't think good, better, best is a good strategy. I think we moved away from that purposely because I don't want a person who's getting my recap package, which doesn't include certain longer videos, to think like this is the crap video. Yeah. Like this is the crap photo package. Like, and if you're doing like basic deluxe and it works for you, okay, by all means, go for it. But if you're looking to revamp it and like change your names and, and, and create a more clear communication, A, I think you should communicate, find a way to communicate either abstractly where it's not sending the message that this is crap and this is good or very specifically, like this is what you get. Like I, like I've seen some photographers where it's like, um, the, Album package. Mm-hmm. That, what do you get in that? You get an album. I don't even mind saying six hours, ten hours mm-hmm. as the package names. Yeah, but yeah. like that, like that's if it works for me on Amazon and when I'm purchasing, it it works for customers. Yeah, and it's like simplicity, but also like don't demean your other packages um, because ultimately, like. If you're setting up your pricing correctly, you shouldn't really be losing that much money if they buy the lower package or the higher package. You should be doing less work, but you shouldn't be losing money. And we've tried to structure our packages in such a way that we're going to make similar hourly rate from all our packages. Yep, yep. We're just going to do less work. Yep. And so like, if you do that, you don't need to steer a person away. And so I would encourage you, if you're naming your packages and organizing them, don't name them things that make the other package look bad. Mm-hmm. It's just a simple tip, but it's just psychology 101. 
Um, another thing that I've uh, seen a lot of success success in, and I think it's just a, a general rule of success or, or sales, is uh, the power of threes, right? Yep. So having three different packages. I've seen some photographers who are very successful who have five or six packages. But for us, I, I, I don't know. It just it just works. Um, it, there's a so simple, what do you do with all that extra stuff that you can't put in a package? So, it, I mean, then it gives you the opportunity to upsell. You know, wow. I, I think... Um, the, the sales process, it's a staircase, right? So you start with, you know, the basic options that you give somebody, but you also want your average sales to go up. You want to offer a la carte pricing. I, I would highly recommend a la carte to everybody. Um, some people are like, no, they, they want to make them go up to that next tier. Um, and what I found is that by doing it this way, um, not only do a lot of people order um, throughout the year, like a lot of people will order things, uh, us as videographers and even photographers with with print sales, um, we have other things that we can throw in the mix and add to that. You know, we average sell sale. second shooters, drones, edits all the time. Yeah, in a second or third um, sales engagement with the customer. Yep. So your goal with your with the way you sell and your packaging and prices should really be to extend your sales window. So that you have more than just the initial opportunity. You know what I've seen <clears throat> with like luxury brands and like, and, may, and, and this is just a thing to consider how you want to be positioned. But luxury brands, like if you go like, I'm going to buy a Mercedes Benz, you're going to buy this Mercedes Benz, and they're going to get you in the door with a price that's like, oh, two ninety nine a month. And you're going to be like, oh wow, I can afford a mm-hmm. Mercedes Benz. And then you're going to go there and it's like, well, if you want it to have no steering wheel, yeah, <laughs> you can have this. Yeah, one. definitely. And then you get, and then they're like, oh, do you want air conditioning? 500 bucks more. Yep. This, and it's like. They get you in the door. So, and, and I noticed that on, on, you know, we're on the knot, we're on the wedding wire, you know, being able to say, hey, we start at this specific price. It gets people in the door that maybe are, are you're probably out of their price range, but they're like, well. You know, I want something nice, and then you get them to fall in love with your, with your work, and they're like, "Well, maybe this is actually doable." Yeah. You know, I want to add on this, or especially, I mean, uh, we we do offer a raw footage package. Um, which, Talk a little bit about why we decided to do that, and then how do we? Yeah, use sure. Because I think that's one of the biggest things I questions I get from people mm-hmm. who who talk to me about our brand. Yeah. They're like, you sell a raw footage package? And then I'm like, yeah. And then they go, do people want that? <laughs> and uh, I say, yeah, we sell a lot of them. Yeah, we do. Um, so the main concept is you get raw footage. We show up, we shoot the day. We sh- it's actually our highest, you know, return as far as like, you know, we're there for, it's our highest hourly rate. It's not as much money, but it's definitely our highest hourly rate. Um because we want people to hire us for the full day so we can get more money. Um, but as far as hourly rate and, and our payout to a lead shooter, um, you know, it's our, it's our highest. Um, but the idea is we want someone down the line to come back to us and say, hey, we actually want to have, you know, a recap video or summary video, trailer video, you know, whatever you call it, um, down the line. Or and we I sell it like this. that up front. Totally. So we tell the people, like, when, you, when a person starts saying to us, like, well, I don't know if that, that seems kind of expensive for me, your yep. recap package, we'll, yep. we'll, we'll be like, well, you know what you can do? You can get this raw footage package, and then, you know, we'll, we'll email you after the yep. wedding, and we'll just get, we'll connect, and yep. maybe when you have a little more money, you're not in the middle of this crazy wedding season, you can get an edit. It's, it's essentially a payment plan where somebody is like, hey, I want ha- to, and I tell people, filming the wedding is the most important part. You want to have it done really well, so pay us a certain amount to come and, and you know do the shooting really well, and then you can decide on when you have enough money to maybe even for buy your anniversary. I mean, you're pretty much anniversary. You holidays, might get to sell everything. a person if they book a year and a half in advance yep. for two and a half years. Yeah, is your sales window with that customer? Yep. And so, like, it is. that's why we is. did it and why we we thought it made sense. And it does seem, you know, credit cards are huge, right? Yep. Extending payments are huge, and like. We are like that's how the world is. Yep. Um, the other thing that helps our packages a lot is being flex, having flexible payment options. And mm-hmm. I know that's not exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But but I think just um, they see the prices; they're really simple. Yep. They see all these a la carte items, 
Um, so we get an opportunity to um, get a contract signed with someone. Maybe they don't want, they're like, I don't want a second shooter. Yep. And then you get into that meeting with them and we're going like, do you want us to cover that thing? I don't think I can cover that thing. And we're being sincere. We don't, we don't, ups, we're not like upselling people, pushing people to buy things they don't need. Yep. That's important to us. That's our character and our values. Yep. But if they say it, we're like, well, I could do that if you can get a second shooter. Yeah, maybe I should. Yep. All the time that happens. Yep. Yep. All the time. And then we're really flexible with our payment. And then we're really flexible with even how someone can get their weddings edited with like raw footage packages. Um, maybe they just get a recap and then they call us. We shoot so that every wedding can have a long cut. So that's one of our goals yep. and our rules. We shoot it the same way that we would cover all of it. Yeah, our, our recap package. In terms of how we up. make our packages, minus one specific detail yep. with our love story packages, because they always include a second shooter, we shoot every single package exactly the same way. And the only difference that we have is what the client gets and how much time we spend in post. Mm -hmm. To, to circle back kind of on that flexibility point, I mean, when I'm on the phone with people and I'm telling people about the raw footage package, um, I think uh, I tell people, hey, you can, yeah, you're going to get this raw footage. You can edit it if, if you want to. You can have someone that you know edit it or, you know, later on down the line, you can have us circle back and edit it. Uh, I would say the majority of people that order the raw footage package call us a week later, a month later, a year later and say, you know, I yeah, want to have this. I want to have this edit done. Yeah. So it's it's you know you might be a little bit scared of being like, well, you know, I don't want to lose that sale. The truth is, I mean, you're probably losing it to somebody. Um, yeah. you, you, <laughs> probably someone, maybe someone us. like us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, but but I think giving people that flexibility is huge for them. And I would say that's the one thing that people say about us is those guys are really easy to work with and they're really flexible with their options. And I hammer that. And what's important is because a lot of people aren't flexible. If you're not flexible, you need to ask a rational question. Why? Yes. Like, because what we decided very quickly was like, we're actually not giving anything away. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give anything away. And, and the customer gets that. Yep. The customer is not like, well, I want you to work for free. Can you work for free? Yep. Like, we're not giving anything away by doing the raw footage package. Yep. We're not losing. I mean, do I would I like to only sell love stories? Probably, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. But but we're not giving anything away because um, we've structured our business in such a way that we make the same amount per hour, mm -hmm. no matter what package we shoot, maybe slight differences. And The, the but, lowest, pa actually, I would say, it, I think the, that lowest package is our most profitable because when we start doing the recap, then we're willing to essentially we're making more money, but it's it's a lowerly lower hourly rate. It it is a little bit lower because essentially if we're selling the raw footage package for two grand, that's ten hours of coverage. That's two hundred dollars an hour, and our average is probably closer to like like one fifty an hour for the recap. But we are doing getting less money up front. So, you know, I, I think... Yeah, if you factor in operation costs, I'm not sure if our that's our highest hourly, but if you were just shooting mm -hmm. and you didn't have all the costs that we have... I, we <laughs> essentially want to make people pay more per hour if they're not going to be hiring us for as much work. Yes, for sure. And, and ultimately, like, that's all planned and designed by us. And, and mm -hmm. so I, I guess that leads me to the next question I was going to ask is, what, like being intentional with your packages, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. How can people make decisions in your mind about how to get what really ha have, how to have their packages get them the clients that they want and do the work that they want to do that they think they can do a great job with? How do we how do we use our packages to help us get the work we want, the clients we want, um, in order to, in, in my opinion, get the people that we can make the most happy? Hmm. I think I feel like that's what our packages are structured around is this is what we do well. This is what makes us money. Yep. This is what's going to make customers happy. Um, we've said it a few times. When we first started, we did all these crappy, and they weren't, they weren't crappy. They were yep. good, but they, people didn't want them. All these, I was watching them the other day just to be nostalgic, and I remember all the work that went into some of these videos that we did, Yeah, all this extra production, and then we tried to sell it at a rate that we needed to to make a living, and people wouldn't buy it, and we were like, People just want recaps. Yep. 
And so that's what customers wanted. So we very quickly decided, like, we have to find a way to make this profitable, do a good job, and, and get people what they want. Yeah. <clears throat> and that, that our packages were structured that way. So I would, I would say um, most people are going to order your middle <laughs> package. If, if you have three packages, they're going to order whatever that middle package is the most. For, in our case, they order probably five times more our middle package than our other packages. Yep. Um, the, the extremes, the high Because that's psychology, low. right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, that's too much. You know, that's too little. Right in the middle is perfect. You know, it's like the Goldilocks uh, uh, analogy, I guess. Yeah, um, Goldilocks them. Yeah. Um, but um, so so I would say if you if you are looking for, you know, the the right client, I would say the price point's a big deal. Uh, you have to factor in um, who, you, you, what your average, you know, wedding film costs in your area, uh, what your market is. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about making the money that you, you know, want to make. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it, it's kind of less about the money that you want to make and more what the market affords and also what your, your skill level is, right? So I think it's a, it's, it's just a, it's a, it is a journey. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't, Nobody's going to get it right totally. Yeah. So so I guess I would say, I love that, by the way, with saying like really put your, pad your middle package. That's your bread and butter package. Yes. Even if you really want to sell two packages, I would recommend having a third one, even if you know no one's going to buy it, mm -hmm. just so that the customer feels like they have options. Yep. And they're, it's psychologically satisfying to have options and like add value to it. Don't just have a top package that's crap or a bottom package that's crap. Nothing yeah. should be crap. But like base it on um, the work you do, the time you spend, the value you provide to the customer and, and start with, hey, we're, we're pretty simple. Ba the cheapest package is less work. Mm -hmm. The highest package is most work. Yep. That's pretty much it. Yep. We, you get the most stuff and the least stuff. I, I think um, from what I've seen, a, a lot of people out there want to add everything to every single package. So, so <coughs> you know, this package gets this. You mean just in the wording or, or even in what how they're uh, selling I, it? I think actually how they're selling it. So the actual line items that's included, like for us, um, we are always going to send one at least one shooter. In our higher packages, we sell two shooters. So that's the differential between our first two and our third one, and then also in the third one, uh, or in our second package, you're getting one edit versus the last package, you're getting a bunch of edits. You're getting an Instagram preview, you're getting kind of the full you know, edit of the ceremony uh, and also a recap. Um, so there's a difference in the amount of edits. We don't sell drone as a part of any of our packages. It's not just like a throw in to you know, the third package. It's and the reason we don't do that, if you're wondering, is because um, a, we shoot a lot of weddings, mm -hmm. um, and we, we want to make sure every single one of our sh people who are doing drone is licensed, and I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if everyone mm -hmm. wanted it, we'd figure it out, but... Yeah, and, and it's not... Right now, for the way that our company is structured, it's not really sustainable for us to shoot, you know, every single wedding with drones, so... And it's just an add-on. If someone wants drone, they will pay you for it. They um, will. And, and I've noticed a lot of people... Uh, this is kind of more logistics, but people saying like, oh, yeah, well, if I get the opportunity to shoot drone, I will shoot drone. And that's kind of how they sell it um, where, you know, because they want to create a really good product if they can. Um, but for us, it's, hey, we know we're going to shoot drone. We know we're going to be hired to shoot drone uh, throughout the year. Um, I'll just let the couple decide that when and where I'm doing that and I can actually make money off of it. Um, and it's just a, it's just an easy a la carte item that you can just get people to buy into because if they're really into it, they will do it. You know, why don't and you we, can upsell people all day on that. Why don't we read our read our packages, talk about what our a la cartes are, and then kind mm -hmm. of circle back onto other people's and kind of some final stuff. So I'll start with ours. I think ours are good because and people seem to enjoy it. It seems to be simple for people. So this is what it is. We have three basic video packages. Raw footage package, and this is for our brand Stop Go Love. By the way, if you don't know, we run a a uh, brand called Stop Go Love. We do a lot of weddings, and um, so we have the raw footage package, and this is what it says: one shooter, six to ten hours of coverage, H2 raw footage included. The end. 
Recap package. One shooter, six to ten hours of coverage, four to seven minute recap edit, music license. The end. Love story package. Two shooters, six to ten hours of coverage, four to seven minute recap edit, 30 to 60 second Instagram preview, linear ceremony, toasts and dances, music license, HD raw footage included. That is Every single thing we have now. I would even say we could take out the music license. That's no. kind of just like an added mumbo jumbo thing. But, yeah, I would get rid of that yeah. to be honest. Um, but it's in there, and and I still think you know, three to four bullets for most of our packages. Yep. Um, yep. But what we do is there's learn more buttons. Mm-hmm. So what we what I think we do well is we make it um, first of all keep your packages above the fold, like. If you have, I remember going to someone's site and scrolling down and like, it took me like, like scroll, 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 scroll to get to all their packages. Yeah. And it starts with their most expensive package. It was like seven grand. And I I remember thinking like, this is, whoa, this guy's seven grand. He's not worth seven grand. Mm -hmm. I know it's $7,000 like wedding filmmakers. And this is not actually get to the bottom. He's really willing to work for two grand. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you start with that? Oh, I want the person to buy my bigger package. Dude. People are not stupid. If they see your work and it's not that good, they're not going to spend seven grand for you. Mm-hmm. So if you know and you can have an honest moment with yourself that you're not delivering as much quality as a, a $7,000 videographer, lead with something that will get someone to call you. I, I don't get that. But what I would say, what we do is every single one is above the fold and they're next to one another. Yeah. They're not down a list. Even when I when I send people, I'll talk to people on the phone, do a consultation with them in person or whatever. I'll send them a follow-up email with here are the three packages with only the packages and only the price next to them. So they're able to build essentially their package. And then I do all of our a la carte options right below it. So it's just like, hey, we've simplified it. So all this is is you tell me the package, the number that you want to spend, and you just make the process super simple. Like they know exactly what they're getting and what their cost is. There's no extra mumbo jumbo mixed in at all. Yep. So what? here's what I was going to say. Yeah. What we do is when you click on a package, we actually have examples of all the deliverables. So everything they're going to mm-hmm. get, they can watch a version of it. Yep. They can watch a full ceremony. They can watch a speech. Yep. They can watch a recap. And we might not actually have an Instagram edit on there right now. Um, but they can watch those too on Instagram. Yep. And so like... I, cause it, and it, I think it just goes back to, I, I want someone to know exactly what they're getting even before we catch up on the phone. I mean, there's a lot of... I think there's some good discussion out there with people on packages and, and you know, should you include your packages on your website? It's a big discussion. Sure. Um, and, and a fair discussion. Um, you know, I, I think um, it's different for for everybody I, personally this is my thought if you want to get your packages on your website you need to be middle of the market or below if you're selling it a luxury product i think you know and you want someone to spend five six seven eight nine twelve grand whatever that's when you are hey call us so we can really customize a package for you um but if you're just kind of in that middle range which i would say you know stop go love we're we're priced probably lower you know, uh, to that to that upper class, I would say we're probably middle. We walk the middle of the line, um, but we really want to get everybody. I want people that can only spend two grand on a wedding film, but that, then I want people that can also spend six grand on a wedding. Well, film. and we, we get we shoot all kinds of from athletes yep. to politicians. Yep. Like these are not people that struggle for money. Yeah. yeah. So our goal is we want a package that everyone would want, but anyone can afford. Yep. Like that's our goals. That's our business goal. So our, and and then that's, I will say this, when you're structuring your packages to do work for you, think of your packages and your presentation of them online as part of your sales force. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to do the work that you want them to do. So no matter what you are telling someone, whether you tell them your prices or not, you need to communicate the right message. Mm -hmm. So if you're communicating to someone like, this is high end and expensive, but your work isn't up to snuff. You should seriously look at your 
your how many inquiries you're getting. Mm-hmm. Because if you feel like you're not getting as many inquiries as you're not, there might be a disparity between the quality of work that you think you have mm-hmm. and the way that you're presenting prices. Because if you're actually in a range where you're dealing with a bunch of other people who are presenting their prices, and that's the level of quality that they're measuring and evaluating, you're going to have a hard time competing. Mm-hmm. You know, and so like just being real and really, and actually being really honest where you're at with your business. I know that's a hard thing to do. And like, if you want feedback, there's a lot of people who will tell you like, hey, your work is amazing. You should be charging this. Your work is, okay, you're not there yet, but if you improve in these areas, you could get there. But like, the number one thing is, your packages and the way they're structured and presented online need to be part of your sales force. They need to be very intentional and, and it needs to be done very thoughtfully. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes I see people and I'm like, this person is, doesn't know where to start. They're, you can tell that the whole thing was overwhelming to them. They weren't sure what to present. Really, they just want to shoot weddings. Yeah. And, and also, you can tell when somebody... Let me say this. You can tell when somebody... Isn't consistent in their hourly rate. That that that's probably the yeah. Best it's way just to their price is just based like, on nothing. It's just like random. Like, I I want somebody who's super smart to be like, well, you here's your a la carte item or uh, all your here's your a la carte um, pricing, and I see that for a second shooter, it's uh, an extra thousand dollars. So uh, your recap is at thirty two hundred. So adding a second shooter is forty two hundred. You know, that's not that far away from your love story package. I want them to be thinking about these things. And we talk to a lot of people and they're doing the math. They're like, oh, actually. And then if someone has the means, they're like, the re- love story package is actually a really good value. It's a really good value. Because, and, and I want them to be like, well, you know, I want them to have those internal discussions with themselves. So you're kind of making them work the sales. Like you said, it works the sales force for them. Yes. Because you give them enough information. And then... I, Again, I want people to be able to make a solid decision. It helps people ask great questions in your consultations your, when you set them up to Your packages win. should set you and your customer up to feel great about what they're buying. Mm-hmm. Because they should be walking away going, like, uh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, you know how it is. When you go to a, a car sales thing, mm-hmm. if you pay $420 for your car payment at the end of your negotiation, and you know that you took advantage of every fa- like incentive and you got a good price. You don't think about, oh, you know, you had the money, you afforded it. But when you find out later that you actually didn't get all the deals, mm-hmm. you could have been previously happy and then suddenly you're unhappy. And that's how mm-hmm. people are. It's psychological for them. Yeah. If they look at your packages and prices and then they do the math later and they're like, that doesn't make any sense. I could have got all this. I could have just... Bought the Loke package, got all the all card items, got all the exact same deliverables for for two thousand dollars less. Mm-hmm. What on earth? Yep, it makes you look like a dirt bag. Oh yeah, as a and have like a low character person, and it makes them ticked off. And like, if you're cool with doing that to people, great, that's awesome. But I'm not cool with that. Yep. I, I I want people to feel like they got a good value, and if they feel like they got a good value, it doesn't really matter how much they spent; they're gonna be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's. Something to think about too is is I I want to sell all the car items I want to upsell people but there, there's a fine line between nickel and diming people yep and and selling them all the car items that they have kind of sold to themselves if that makes sense um, totally like all the cart should feel like a my personal opinion is like your base packages should provide value mm-hmm. like and it should suit a need right yes. so like a By lot itself of times, without any needs of add-ons yes it's not well like I don't know in a lot of cases if someone needs a second shooter um, for for our you know ecology not everyone of does. shooting a wedding in our weddings not everyone needs the second shooter you know we can shoot a ceremony with with one shooter and an assistant and and we can shoot if they're getting ready in the hotel the lead shooter can bounce between both hotel rooms and it's it's not hard other weddings like people are getting ready an hour away from each other and so you kind of are like well you know you might think about wanting to get a second shooter something that's up to you or we can we have this other option and then they're like well yeah that makes sense i think we should do it um so yeah they're, they're making the decision themselves 
you're not and saying, they don't feel like they're getting ripped off or like you created yeah. something like confusing because if, if you create something confusing that's when someone's going to start feeling ripped off that's right? not intentional but yeah. what i actually know is most people who don't get good reviews and don't have good customer experiences we talked about at the last podcast like cu- creating a great customer experience the customer experience really goes off the rails when expectations are not clear mm-hmm. and when they're People not met bad, bad communicators and yep. and like and your your communication starts with your packages mm-hmm. Yep. You're communicating to them. This is what you get. This is who I am. Even like this is the type of person I am. Like I yeah. can see some people's packages. I'm like that person's tedious. Yeah. Or that person like has a way inflated view of themselves. Just all kinds of ideas you get just from seeing it right up off the bat. Yep. And it's like I want someone to look and go. Those are nice guys. That'll be simple. They're honest to deal with. That's easy. Yep. Yeah. And and you know I've I've found that every single year there's certain things that I'm like I need to get better at communicating that to. Our client, the raw footage package when we first started doing it was a big one because <coughs> I don't know a single person. I've never seen a single person sell a raw footage package. So we really like invented this thing. We are the best at inventing and, raw footage packages. Uh, but they, you know, it was hard to explain to people because like I was figuring out the language to just like pitch people on it. But then also, you know, I it, the first year I had and even I, I talked to a mom last year who was like, well, what's the point in getting raw footage package then? And I was like, I talked to the daughter about it and the daughter was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then we'll get a recap down the line. And then the mom got the raw footage and was like, what is all this? And the daughter didn't do a good job of explaining to the mom what the daughter was buying with the mom's money. And so, you know, there's like, okay, well, how do we get around that problem? Um, Not really my fault. How did you get around it? In my opinion. Um, I knew the mom was involved and I... We'll always tell brides now, like, well, you know, this is definitely something to bring up to your parents because they're not going to understand this. They're not going to understand. And also get it in writing. So, like, if you're talking to somebody, and and I just started sending everybody. I did a blog about the raw footage package. I did a video on YouTube about it. I sent that like, to show everybody. show people a picture of what the files even look like. So you just kill people with information. And then at the end of the day, like, if they don't read it, if they don't read the information that was sent over that you're highly recommending people to watch to really understand what they're getting, then, you know, you at least have something to lean up against and be like, look, look this is exactly what we said we were doing. Here's we did the ex- email. Here's the email. Like we talked about this, like, and, um, those problems have really gone away because yep. people aren't going to set themselves up to look like, look stupid. I think. Yeah, the um, average person, I don't really believe in Bridezilla's that much. I'm sure we've had a handful over the years, but but in general, like... No one that's listening to this podcast, that's If for you're sure. one of our clients, by the way, you're the best. We appreciate you. <laughs> and that's true, by the way. Um, yeah. we Our clients are amazing, and I feel like on some of it is because we communicate in a way that lets them be so happy, and they, and they feel like our packages are a good value. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're getting what they wanted and expected, a lot of times they're like, oh, I don't need all the other stuff. Oh, you only have that? That's so great. Mm-hmm. And they're so happy. And and so um, <clears throat> our customers become our advocates mm-hmm. because they not only did they get what they wanted, they got good service in a way that made them feel valued. And, and on some level, like I, hopefully we exceeded their expectations by mm-hmm. being hard workers, by being very kind and polite and even a lot of fun the day of. And so like – we don't want any part of our client interaction to hijack our relationship. Literally, from the first time they hit on our website, we want them to be like, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, phone call. Oh, I get it even more. Oh, I met the guys. Oh, I get it even more. Like yeah. everything, this interaction is like the more we interact, the more we want to feel like connected. And, and like, and we probably connect with our brides less than some people, but mm-hmm. I think we walk away with a better relationship than most people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because we're very intentional and we're very thoughtful. So why don't we talk a little bit to close about people who don't list their prices specifically and, and, and how, because because what I find is like there's like a group of people who don't list their prices who have packages. And then there's a group of people who don't list their prices that have no packages and they and maybe they have a starting at price or something like that. What can we do in this is usually on a website, right? On, to present that information in such a way that we're getting the benefits of some of these packaging strategies we're using with our prices without prices. 
How do we present information in a way when we don't have money there to kind of, because sometimes money is the number one way people get, you know, funneled into a package, right? Yep. And we don't, when you don't have that anymore, you pretty much only have the deliverables. Yeah. I, I guess I would say the, the people that um, you're either, what, what are the things that a couple is looking for? They're, lo- they're looking for an experience, <laughs> right? And then they're also looking at your pricing. What percentage of people um, care more about this experience than they do about pricing? I would say <laughs> almost maybe 2%. <laughs> it's like super small. So like uh, that's one reason why we put pricing online because I'm like this is what's impor- actually important to people. Um, I think I, the myth I, is... If you have pricing, you can't upsell. And I think that's a myth. If you think yes, that yes. by getting rid of your price, by adding pricing, that you no longer have the ability to um, get people and sell them, that's just because you don't understand sales or maybe you have a misconception of some things. But we upsell all the time. We take people from spending blah to spending blah without any skeezy techniques, without pressure. So you can still do it. Well, the idea the idea is, and I understand it, uh, is, you know, well, because I, I know that I, when I get people on the phone, I can sell them. And and I think a lot of people out there, especially you get into that upper echelon, you're starting to get into luxury weddings and you're like, you know, Hey, I'm selling people on experience. I'm selling people on me. I want people to like me and my product. And like, that's what you're selling people on, right? But so like, if you don't have prices on the website, your website is all about the experience. It's about the product. It's about all these things. And it's like, by the time you go through this whole experience of seeing the films, hearing the filmmaker or hearing the photographer, you're like, I want this no matter what. I, I, I think that that percent, the percentage of that kind of person that only cares about that, it is pretty small because at the end of the day they're still going to be like well okay well i like your experience and i like that person's experience and that person's less expensive so to me and there's there's probably a small percentage of people and i hear this like it's most people like oh i get people oh i had a bride the other day who said i was gonna only spend two and i got them to spend six mm-hmm. there's a percentage of people out there that probably would do that yep you yep. know um but I, I don't think that's most people yeah, yeah, me neither. So I, I guess, you know, if it's, and, and I'm not saying it's not right. I mean, we, we're talking about launching a new product and it's completely customized. I so, think it's perfectly the correct decision mm-hmm. for a lot of people to not list their pricing. Yep. It is the absolute correct decision to maybe even not have any details on your packages. Mm-hmm. Y- you have to be very, very, very realistic, though, about what you're making, what you can sell, and what your audience is. That is hard. Like yeah. that is going to be humbling and very like if you're not up to snuff to pull that off, you got to be real about that. And if you're sitting there going like, I love weddings. I feel like I'm good at it. And I, I just can't, I, I'm not making as much as I want. I'm not closing as much as I want. People aren't filling out my form. I'm not getting the inquiries I want. Try adjusting this. I would say try adding pricing. Yeah. Try reworking your packaging in a way that makes it easier for someone to know. Because, like I said, there's a specific I, yeah. product that you need to not put pricing. Like, if you're doing luxury, high-end weddings, I don't believe you should put pricing. I think it, it, mm-hmm. that customer doesn't want to interact with you in that way. Yeah. Because it's just assumed. It's just assumed that, like, okay, well, I like you, and whatever you cost is what I want because I like you. Like that, and, and almost well, to, and like, also, it's going to be – it makes it look more bespoke. When yeah. you have no price, and a lot of people, that's well, exactly what they're doing. Certain it's totally stores, custom. Certain stores you go to, and they don't have price tags on them. Like if you go to like a clothing store, it doesn't have a price tag on it. It's it's same exact kind of philosophy. But I would even say Nordstrom's, which I'd say is a nice department store. Well, it's a great department store. No, even Nordstrom's has price tags, and I think that's the way I want to think of ourselves. I want to think of ourselves as Nordstrom's. Like, Nor- it's accessible it's a great luxury. Product. Someone might look at it, have a little bit of sticker shock, but they're like, well, instead of this $80 sweater, I guess I could buy this $50 sweater. Well, you know what they say about Nordstrom, and I love this. Nordstrom is one of my number one models for as an entrepreneur, not because I'm successful with them, because they do something. You buy all their clothing. No, I don't even buy from them that much. Really? But yeah. I've bought their shoes. Of, I've bought shoes there a bunch. Yeah. And I buy them there because I like the experience. And they say this, yeah, yeah. Nordstrom doesn't have customers. Nordstrom has fans. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really fascinating to yep. evaluate is like when you need to transcend your prices. 
Mm -hmm. And so like having prices is not problematic if you deliver transcendent value mm -hmm. in, in your customer service and in your product. And it's, it's not a problem to not have pricing if you're elite level mm -hmm. in your quality and product. And because I do think it's going to be harder and harder and harder for people to hide behind no prices. Yes, yes. I, I would say the amount of people that hide their prices is um, higher than it probably should be in the industry. Like the, because it's seen ever. I feel like everybody wants to be seen as like, oh, I'm this ultra luxury experience. I would probably say a lot of people out there could benefit from actually, you know, showing their prices because it's a way that you can compete. If you're, especially if you're just starting and your quality isn't where those other guys are, um, you know, you're going to be able to beat them just by saying, hey, here's my price. And it's not going to be, and then they get quoted uh, by the person who doesn't post a price at like eight grand and you posted their price, your price to your website. They're like, oh, this person's only four. This per I like this person's work. And they, you know, it means that they don't have to call. And I mean, I got married a couple of years ago. You got married a few years back. And it was just like, I had to email one person five times before I got a, 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 a quote. Like, they were like, well, how many people? I was like, I don't know, anywhere from like 120 to 150. Okay, well, okay. So I'll offer two different quotes at 120, 150. Um, the next email was, um, so what do you want? Annoying. You want beer? You want wine? You want? And so, like, I'm building this whole thing. And then they're like, okay, uh, the bar service is going to cost you $14,000. Do you want so napkins? I, like, uh, <laughs> I can't afford that. And so, you know, at, at least in that case, And you wasted all this price, time with somebody. That's what's annoying. It's like, and then you feel bad. And then I'm like, oh, does this person not like me because I can't afford their product now? And like, you know, it, it's just not a good buying experience. Yeah, I will say. So if you don't show your prices... This is me a tip I would give you because because mm -hmm. we do web design as well, sure. and and when I when I when I tell someone like like put a make it a required field on your form budget make them and just on the like put how you would minimize your thing put your lowest willing to work price as the first option and go up from there mm -hmm. because that person will see quickly on that form that they have to select you know. Five to seven, seven to nine, ten, like whatever that is, mm -hmm. they'll see that in that form. You don't have to pull all your prices. You don't have to explain all your packages, but that person will get that message mm -hmm. very quickly. I can't afford this. Yep. Yep. You know? And I mean, just for my own sanity, like I'm the one who does all the sales and I'm like, if someone can't afford me, I rarely talk to a person that I know can't afford me now. So, yes. I mean, and that's my goal is like. Well, you say all the time, like they go, can you tell me more about your packages in Instagram or other yep. thing? We say, here's a link. Yeah. Go I, check our prices out. I, 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 we rarely hear from those people. When I, when I catch up with someone on the phone, they've seen our prices every single time they've seen it. And that we used to get a little bit of like, Oh, can you send me your pricing? And I'm like, well, okay, it's on the, on the website, but we just put it everywhere. So it's like a par whole part of our sales process. Cause I think we're in, you know, so I, I would say the main Thing to hopefully take away from this conversation is find out what your market is, find out what your, you know, I think of base it on your middle package. Yep. You know, what is how many weddings in that, you know, range are you trying to sell? Make your value What's clear. Your bread and butter. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, base your approach on selling a lot of that specific package. And then, you know, if you can do some add-ons and and kind of make like a sales staircase out of that. Um yeah, I think that's going to be your best best case. Yeah. Don't be so concerned with what high-end people who are running fancy courses and things like that tell you to do because they're probably just doing 20 weddings a year at like eight grand each. Mm -hmm. They're in a different – they're playing a different game mm -hmm. than you are. You are. If you're listening to this, maybe you're that person, and if you are – We'd love to have you as a guest, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but most likely you're you're you know you're now not average like it is an insult, but you're you're not doing that. You're probably working hopefully thirty weddings. You're making market average, and like you know you need to create leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to create yeah. leads. That's the number one thing I would tell all of you is like. Yep. It's not even just about creating sales. It's about creating leads. And so your packages have to create leads from the way that they're written out to the way that they're structured. 
even to where your get a hold of us button is on mm -hmm. that page. Every single thing needs to be structured at creating leads, creating phone calls, because that's where sales happen. Mm -hmm. Sales don't happen on your website. Sales happen on the phone. Sales happen at a coffee shop. Sales happen because of relationships. And so your packages need to produce relationship building opportunities. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's it. So, hey, if you enjoyed that and you, and you um, thought it was awesome, we want to hear from it. Give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and give us a five-star review and um, let us know what you liked about it. If you thought it was stupid, here's what <laughs> I'm going to challenge you on. Don't just give me a down vote. Tell me why you thought it was stupid in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. And uh, we subscribe, hit that bell because, let's face it, you're not going to get notified on new posts on YouTube if you don't. Um, we also got some other cool stuff coming out, actually, that's not just the podcast. But if you didn't know, we have tips and all this other content that's on there that you can check out on the YouTube channel. Yep, yep. And, and kind of gearing it more towards what we're good at, doing photo and video, uh, going to be doing tips and tricks, going to be doing a little bit of gear review stuff. And um, yeah, so, I mean, again, we, we do want to make it based on you know, what the people out there uh, on the YouTubes and, and um, what people are actually dealing with. So if you guys have questions, if you guys want us to cover a specific topic, um, if you're having challenges in your own business, let us know because we want to base, you know, conversations and have guests on uh, according to what people are actually going through, not just kind of what we're going through in our small little world. Our little um, tiny universe. It's yeah. like, uh, it's the tough thing is like, hey, we're in the same situation. We're our little boat. Yep. We get wrapped into the same thing. So if you're having, it's good to have outside people because, man, then you get some different perspective. Hopefully we're yeah. providing that for some of you guys. Yeah. So guys, thank you again for listening to the Wedding Pros Podcast and we'll see you next week.